What's up everyone, Alex here. It's been a while since I've done an Odin 2 video, but I kind of avoided the whole train and the fact that Yuzu has now disbanded, they've been taken down, and the development of the emulator is no longer happening. So the last version of Yuzu that you can get is the final version, there will not be any more. But there is something cool that I want to show off today. It's a new turnip driver. It's version 18. I'll leave a link for this in the description. And I was kind of surprised that this actually did help with some games in a way where I thought, oh, I would have expected a Yuzu update to fix this. So here we have Dragon's Dogma, for example. And this game ran great, but it had these weird shadow lighting issues, like the shadows would flicker and it just didn't, you know, render correctly. Um, with this driver, the game is running perfectly, and that really surprised me because I did not think this was going to happen. So I was playing Dragon's Dogma for a little bit, and it's kind of, you know, makes it a nice thing to demonstrate now because Dragon's Dogma 2 is literally on the horizon, and it's a game I am really looking forward to. I, I loved the original game. I got the Dark Arisen version of this. And I basically finished it three times in a row. I think I actually platinumed it as well. And I love, love the combat of these games. So I'm really looking forward to Dragon's Dogma 2. But if you are looking to play the original on Android portably, you can now do it with the latest version of Yuzu with the newest driver. So let's check out some gameplay. One of my favorite things about this game is that you can basically climb any enemy if they are large enough and the sequel looks like it's going to have some pretty big enemies so that's something I'm really looking forward to. Things out tomorrow I'm getting it for the PC because it's quite a monster of a game and I would like to see that game at 60 frames plus which apparently the PlayStation 5 might not be able to quite hit. So yeah to be able to play this on Android now is pretty fantastic. I want to show off some other things as well. I've shown Bayonetta 2 off before and it ran really well. I tried it again with the newest driver and I didn't really see any drops in the frames. I thought this is fantastic. Uh, might as well show it again. I did actually have a look at Bayonetta 3 and I actually read on a Reddit somewhere that the game runs very well on Yuzu. Uh, I disagree and with the latest turnip driver I did see that there were errors still in how some of the things were rendered and the lighting. So I just decided that we will never get to see Bayonetta 3 being playing on an Android device. And I do know about the light like, forks and things coming that uh, with future Switch emulation. So today actually a version, uh, a Switch emulator called Suyu just released their first like official release and the thing is I'm gonna leave it a little while I'll check it out but I think if I personally do any kind of video on it I want to give it some time I want to see some substantial differences between Yuzu and Suyu and see if it's going anywhere and just you know just let the dust settle down it was a pretty crazy time. It's weird that the emulation has ended, but it does seem obvious that some of the practices is one of the reasons why Nintendo hammered down on it, like maybe the way they were making money. It, it all didn't seem, you know, like kosher. It's a, it's a weird one. Emulation is going to happen one way or the other. I just want to quickly chime in and say that Grime had a couple of graphical errors, and when I was playing with the newest driver, it seemed to run just fine. So that's really awesome. But yeah, emulation is going to happen one way or another. Some people describe it like a hydra. You cut one head off, more heads will come. It's pretty much like that. We are going to get future variants of emulation and other developers eventually coming in to try and make Switch emulation and anything going forward. That's just the way it's going to work. But Switch is an easier system to emulate and it's treading on Nintendo's toes. I also want to show here with Pikmin 4, in my last video I think I said this doesn't work, but if you change that accuracy level to extreme, the game works very well and with the newest turnip driver it doesn't seem to have any graphical errors. There were a couple of lighting issues the last time I played it and when I played it this time I didn't see any of the errors, so it seems to be working just fine, which is really cool because it's a really cool game, so it seems like it's going to work brilliantly.
Island Unicorn Overlord is a brand new game and I've been testing it a little bit on this emulator and it seems to work just fine. I didn't have any problems. I am using a Qualcomm driver in the top left. I forgot to show which one, but it's basically the latest Qualcomm driver. I haven't seen any problems with this game and it ran perfectly. But you know, I do want to chime in a little bit on the whole emulation thing in that, see with Yuzu, the thing is like, if you want to emulate software you own and do modifications to it and play it in a better way or a way you would like to play, I think that's completely valid. And it was something, for example, I remember with Metroid Samus Returns for the 3DS, I literally hated holding the 3DS at the time and playing the controls. I could not edit the controls. And I bought the game and the fact that I could emulate it and play it in a way that I found more comfortable and enjoyed more made me enjoy the game even more. So I, I, there's totally a lot of valid points to emulation, but the fact is, take Unicorn Overlord here. If you love this game and you want to see Unicorn Overlord 2, the fact of the matter is that you have to buy the game. Not a year later, not like, you know, on a massive sale or whatever, even though that does help. The biggest way to speak to a developer or publisher and say we want more of this is to buy it pretty much near the release. That's another case with, for example, the new Prince of Persia game. Now, that is a series that has been dormant for so long, so I think a lot of fans are surprised that Prince of Persia even got a new game. So it's out, it runs really well on the Switch and the Switch emulator already, but if you played the new Prince of Persia, for example, and you're like, God damn, I'd love a sequel to this, Prince of Persia 2, like a big new Metroidvania game, the fact is you gotta buy it. If you buy it, that tells Ubisoft that, oh my God, we made something that really resonated with people, let's make another. It's pretty much how it works. So if you played it, emulated it and you want to see a sequel, you gotta buy it and then you will see a sequel. If you're someone that like gets a game and then wonder like, oh, why aren't they making a sequel? It's such a great game. And you find out that it just didn't sell well. That's, that is one of the biggest uh, issues. Anyway, drifting away from emulation, I wanted to like move back to uh, Android a little bit. Uh, other things to do with the Odin 2, I made a video on this Zelda port, which is called the Ship of Harkonian. It's like, that's how we run like a port of Zelda Ocarina of Time. And I did a whole video on how to install it and all the little things it has. It's really cool. So I thought I'd show that off again and maybe mention the video. And I'd love to hear from you guys if you have any like cool ideas or cool things you love to do with your Odin 2. This is what I wanted to do at the end of this video. I saw a Reddit thread where somebody had like added these like shaders and bezels to their games on Retroarch. And I want to demonstrate here that I, you know, followed exactly what they did pretty much and tinkered around with things. And I'll show you how to do this and link a uh, video in the description to help if mine doesn't cover everything. But basically what this does is like, there's a, you don't have to have the CRT effect if you don't want, but there's like a border there where like it reflects the game. And then there's an ambilight outside. Anyway, so here I just want to show that in drivers, I've changed the video to Vulcan. And then if you go down to the online updater at the bottom, you have to download the latest slang shaders. So just a quick note as well that I run my games from my front end. If you do this, you won't be able to do that. You have to open RetroArch from the start without running any games. Anyway, so in the quick menu, if you go down to shaders, you can turn on the shaders and navigate these folders here. So shaders slang, bezel, cocoa, and then there's a few folders here with a few different presets. So you can choose like different monitor types. You can choose the way the effect works. I wish there was an easier way of demonstrating each of these. You do literally have to pick one, start from scratch, open every folder again, and then do it again. And then if you back out and you want to make sure that you go to save core preset, this will make sure that this effect will save on the core you're using. You want to make sure you do that, otherwise you have to do it every time. Also in the video scaling, you want to set the aspect ratio to full, otherwise the shader won't work properly. And also I just wanted to show that with on-screen overlay, you don't have to use this, but I use this as like an additional effect. This is what I was using before with RetroArch, but I've combined the two now. So I've been using these ones that are provided by RetroArch and I've used a different one for each emulator. I use the overlay opacity and set it very low for a very transparent effect. And then I move the scale so I can stretch or pull that away and wrap it around the TV screen effect. 
Anyway, after that in the quick menu, you wanna go down to overrides and then save core override. And that'll make sure that the settings you've just done will save to your core. And you can also go to configuration file here and do save current configuration. You might have it set so that when you quit RetroArch, it will save every time, but just do that just in case if you're not sure. And that's pretty much it, that's the tutorial. And I'm just gonna demonstrate some games here. Terra Enigma is one for the Super Nintendo that never got released in the US. It's part of like Quintet's trilogy of Illusion of Gaia, Soul Blazer, and then Terra Enigma. It's one of my favorite games of all time. And I always recommend it to people as like, one of those games they've never heard of, but absolutely have to play. And a lot of people who do play it always end up saying, oh, it's fantastic. Anyway, going over to Game Boy Advance and Game Boy, I wanted to show that I did a different preset. We're gonna use a handheld filter instead of a CRT filter. And it kind of like emulates the older screens and that you can kind of see the pixels a little more. And it's something I've just started to enjoy a bit more. So if we go down to shaders, we're gonna to go to load, and then we're gonna to go to the same fold as we did before, into bezel, then Coco, and I'm gonna to go to preset handhelds. I'm gonna choose the first option here, dots underscore one dash one. There's another one underneath that. I don't like that as much, but basically that's what gives that effect that you can kind of see this like crisscross of pixels in the game. And when I was looking at like the original Game Boy Advance, I sort of noticed this was a kind of similar effect. And I thought, you know what, this is quite nice. And we also get that kind of, there's a slight border and there is the ambilight effect on the sides. I've chosen the Ness overlay on the sides as well, just like with the opacity capacity quite low and in some games the light kind of like stretches out and looks quite nice and uh, I think it looks really neat it also looks especially neat on the Game Boy Color games which I'll show soon Metroid Fusion here, I think it shows a little bit of the light, but this effect does work a lot better on the um, the CRT filters. And there's loads of filters you can choose from. You can just, you know, go between them and see which ones you like. A lot of them have like uh, a zoom out effect where you can see like a whole television, things like that. Here I've used the Game Boy overlay so that it looks like I'm actually playing a Game Boy, even though the original Game Boy wasn't in color. If they had a Game Boy color one, I would use it. I should probably look for one actually. And just, I'm really enjoying these filters. Uh, when I saw them and I started playing them, uh, it just sort of just brought back all these like old memories I have of just like playing games when I was a kid. I'm really enjoying that. I think I'm gonna start playing some more retro games lately. I feel really in the mood for that. I don't know if you guys are aware, there are so many RPGs out this year, it's actually crazy. Um, there's at least like 10 brilliant ones that I know I'm going to play at some point this year, so I kind of can't believe it, you know, I ha haven't got time to like play these old games and do videos, and I also do music, I actually have some ideas for some music I want to do soon, and I've been doing some different commission jobs, so that's one of the reasons why I don't always do videos as regularly as I would like. The more I play on the Odin 2, the more I think to myself like, is there really gonna be anything better than this as an Android device in the future? And it's really hard to imagine. Like, I really don't know. Also Mega Drive games with this CRT filter looks really good. Chosen appropriate Super Castlevania 4 overlay as a transparent on the side. Uh, you know, Sega games are more moody, so it kind of works well that way. But yeah, thinking about devices going forward, the only one I'm really excited about, to be honest, is the new Mario Mini Flip, whenever that comes. I think that'll be a really cool device to have. But every time I'm playing my Odin lately, even with Yuzu uh, disbanding and being shut down, uh, I still, I just think the Odin 2 is incredible. I love this device so much. I, and I couldn't tell you what I'd want from an Odin 3. Even more power seems like, well, what's the point? Because then I'd have to pay more. There, there isn't really that much on an Android device that's really going to make the benefit of it. But uh, yeah, sorry, I've been rambling a lot. That's the end of the video. Please give it a like, subscribe, hit the bell icon, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.